Hello and welcome to Six Steps to Completing Your Passion Project. Uh, I'm Bob Baker, author of the Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook. I'm also an adjunct professor at Lindenwood University, where for the past five years I've been teaching a music marketing class based on my book. Uh, what you're about to see and hear uh, was obviously recorded just a little before New Year's of 2021. Uh, and even though it was recorded during that uh, kind of New Year's resolution time of the year. It's these are principles that you can apply no matter when you watch or listen to this. And while these six steps can be applied to pretty much any passion project, they're especially helpful for musicians and people interested in the music industry and related activities. So buckle up, enjoy this. I'll talk to you again at the very end. Well, hello, my friends, Bob Baker here coming at you live with a mini workshop that I am calling uh, New Year, New You, Six Steps to Completing Your Passion Projects. That's right, that's what I'm going to be covering here, six important steps to completing your passion project. So let's just clarify right up front, what do I mean by passion project? Well, that's something that you have a sincere interest in. This is something that's like outside of your day job or maybe house chore related. Um, it's often creative, uh, but it's something that you've been longing to do. And most likely you either have been procrastinate, procrastinating about even starting on it, or you've kind of uh, been involved with it in fits and starts. Uh, you, you, it's been sitting on the back burner. Um, and so that's what a passion project is. It could be a book. It could be a music album. It could be a collection of art pieces. Uh, it could be uh, even uh, a desire that you have to take one of your hobbies and monetize it or start a sideline business or a side hustle, as a lot of people call it. Uh, a passion project could also be something with a personal development or um, self-improvement, like starting a meditation practice, getting more healthy. Uh, but it usually has something to do with creativity, but not always. But it's just something that you've been longing to do. Maybe it's volunteer or join the board of a nonprofit. I mean, the list goes on and on. But that's what a passion project is. Um, and so I'm recording this in the last couple of days of 2020, a very weird and very challenging year for many, many people. And so I'm doing it in the frame of right around the corner is that New Year's, uh, you know, start fresh uh, frame of mind resolutions and all that stuff. And so I'm actually uh, giving you these ideas here in hopes that you will launch into the new year uh, with some enthusiasm, with some tools and maybe some strategies that you can get that passion project, make progress on it, and even complete the damn thing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Um, and so even though I'm recording it now on the cusp of 2020, 2021, uh, I'm recording this live on Facebook, but I plan on uh, taking an edited version of this and putting it on my YouTube channel. Uh, and so you may be watching it now you might be watching it uh, a few months from now or years from now. So, but whenever you happen to stumble upon this, uh, it doesn't have to be New Year's. It doesn't have to be January. You can get a lot of value out of this whenever and wherever you are. And so, before, so that's what's in store here uh, for six steps to completing your passion project. You can have that New Year, New You kind of frame of mind in June, in July, whenever, <laughs> whenever you feel compelled to just kind of start a new chapter of your life. Uh, before I jump into those tips, I just want to let you know who I am. My name is Bob Baker. Uh, I have done a lot of things in the arts in particular, been a longtime musician, a guitar player, a singer, a songwriter. Probably over the years, I put out several albums worth of original material with different configurations. Uh, and even though I still play uh, and perform and record uh, part-time, but actively part-time these days. My heyday was back in the 80s, and in fact, I'm wearing my new Easily Distracted by 80s Music t-shirt that my friend Tammy, a uh, graphic designer and book designer in Austin, uh, created, and I ordered one of these because uh, I am definitely easily distracted by 80s music. Uh, but music has been a big part of my life, also the written word. I'm, I'm a published author, 
of 15 physical books um, and probably another dozen or so uh, titles in ebook and audiobook and online course formats. I've attended, I've spoken at, at panels and workshops and conferences uh, in the music industries and other creative fields. And so, and a lot of my books are on music marketing and helping artists to uh, sort of take that passion and develop it and maybe even build a little business out of it if they so desire. So that's been a lot of what I've done over the years. I've also done theater. I've done a lot of things in the arts. I've done visual arts, uh, performing arts. That would last 10 to 15 years. I uh, regularly teach and perform improv comedy too here in my hometown of St. Louis, although I've been doing it on Zoom um, for uh, for most of this year. And so uh, so you see, I have a pretty wide uh, range of creative um, uh, uh, experiences in my past. Uh, and from for much of my adult life, I've been self-employed. Uh, and so um, and so, yeah, that's where I'm coming from. So I have a lot of wisdom to share through my podcasts and a newspaper that I used to publish here years ago. I've interviewed this countless successful musicians and artists picked their brains. And so I've been exposed to some of the, the best best practices of some of the most successful, uh, independent, at least, um, uh, artists and people in creative fields. So that's where I'm coming from. And so buckle up and let's jump into these, uh, these six steps here. Um, and so we're going to go to PowerPoint here for a little bit or some, some, some slides. And so number one is you have to choose your passion project. Um, you have to know what it is that you're aiming for, or what you're wanting to create. So as I, as the text says there, decide on something specific you will focus on. It could be a book, like I said before, a music album, an art project, a sideline business, a meditation practice, or anything that you want to create or develop, especially if you've been putting that thing off. This is sort of like to motivate you to get off the pot uh, and to start taking some action on that thing. Um, and I'm going to show you some ways of, of doing that. And so for some people, um, some people are very fortunate and they know very clearly uh, what they want to create. Like they want to create a book of their poetry or they have four songs that they want to go into the studio and, and record. So when it's specific and measurable like that, it's very, it's very helpful and it gives you a defined goal. But a lot of people I've encountered... Uh, are a little more non-specific about it, a little wishy-washy, if I can use that uh, that term. Um, and so, uh, if your if your goal is if your passion project is to do something crafty, but I haven't figured out. So you know, I, I you have to get clear about it. Um, and I understand if you don't if you don't know, there are a lot of people that just are are unsure. They feel compelled to do something. So if that describes you. Uh, a couple of things you can ask yourself. What are you most passionate about? Um, what is something that's really been calling to you lately? What's something that you know you're going to stick with um, and and see to, com to completion? Uh, another thing you can do is just put a bunch of post-it notes on a wall with all the different ideas you have and then throw a dart. I really don't care <laughs> how you choose, but pick something specific. And if this helps, I think this is really helpful. I'm going to be probably coming back to this point throughout this talk. Uh, and that is pick something that's small enough that you can actually have a win. Like for instance, if you're not ready to record a whole album of songs, maybe your passion project or your initial goal is just to write one song and record it on your phone. I mean, that alone, and that alone could be a victory for you if that's been something that's been holding you up. So pick something, make it specific, um, and then that's the very, that's the first step, um, to, uh, to making progress with that passion project, choose your passion project and be very specific about it. All right. Number two, what's your big why? And this is so important. Why do you want to create or develop this project? Think about how you will feel when you accomplish it. And another thing which just really motivates me and a lot of the most successful people is how will other people benefit from you achieving this goal? So what is your big why? Because your why is what's going to fuel you uh, to, and motivate you to stay at this thing. Um, because willpower alone is great, but um, 
but if you if you if you have a, a, a strong enough why, it'll propel you forward. Quite often, the whys are are multi faceted uh and so it's quite all right to have a self-serving why like um like i just i have this i will the sense of accomplishment i feel i feel this urge to create this thing and i know it's going to feel good when i finally hold it in my hands that is awesome um if you want to do it for recognition for people saying hey man i read your book or i saw your play or whatever heard your song uh and it was fabulous that's 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 a good motivation too um but if but if you can tie into if you're okay with sharing your work, I know there's a lot of sensitivity around sh uh, sharing your your stuff publicly and people you know give you feedback or criticism, which I think is overblown. Um, but when you get to that point of sharing it, just imagine how that thing is going to benefit other people, how that song or that book or whatever is going to uplift or educate or inspire someone else. Uh, and so whatever. Pick one of those, pick multiple ones, use that to, to fuel you. So I'm, I'm recording this live on Facebook and I'm able to pull in some comments here. And let me see here. My friend uh, Jordan says, what if I'm in a rut with a chosen project? Move on to something else in a rut. So uh, I guess you come to a standstill, meaning maybe you got, you've, you're not sure how to continue a book or a painting or whatever the case may may be uh, move on to something else so it's possible yeah possibly you could move on to another project or just take a break from it um and then come back to it if there's if there i mean if, if you have totally turned <laughs> against it you just no longer uh, are enjoying it uh it, and then that runs pretty deep maybe yeah maybe just put it put it on the uh, shelf for a little while and come back to it but there's still uh, an inkling of you to finish this thing, I would say just power through it. Um, I'm a big fan, and I'm going to be talking about this, to having a daily practice of, of, of carving out time. That's coming up in another one of the uh, tips um, where you stay at this and you, you dedicate some time, hopefully every day or at least multiple times a week to working on this thing. And every time you sit down, you're not going to be doing cartwheels or, or whatever. There'll be times, and so Jordan knows because he mentioned there, I used to publish a uh, a magazine uh, here in St. Louis called Spotlight. And I did that for 10 years. And every month I had deadlines to get another issue out. And believe me, I procrastinated on writing the articles or the cover stories or, or whatever. And when I sat down, the last thing I wanted to do, was, and you've worked on deadlines too, because I know you're a journalist uh, of your own, uh, in, in your own right there, Jordan. Um, and so uh, deadlines oh, I will teach you to to create when you're not in the mood. And so there were often, you know, those, I was late at night and I begrudgingly sat down and started typing out the beginning of an article. And after a while, one sentence led to two. And I go, oh, that's a nice turn of phrase. Oh, that's a cool way to open this. And before I knew it, I was in the flow. So sometimes you just have to sit down and prime the pump and, um, and just keep working on it. But yeah, at some point, yeah, you have to do, every now and then there's a project that I start that I real that something that I never have been involved in that uh, I think would be cool. And then once I get involved in it, it's like, you know, this isn't as what I was, I thought it was going to be. And so it's okay to move on, but don't use that as your excuse. If you're doing that with multiple projects, I get stuck, I move on. Then there's probably something else at play there and you just need to push through it and get the thing done. <laughs> you are certainly welcome. Um, all right. So what's your big why? Let's go on to the next one here. Carve out the time and space. We were just kind of talking about this. So, of course, you have when you set a goal for this passion project, you have an intention to create it. You, you, you've, you've dedicated to having some focus on it. So for, for those intentions and for that focus to pay off, you must move into the physical world of action. And there are two important aspects that you have to clar clarify. And I like to point them out here. They're right there in the title of that time and space. Let's examine time first. When, you have to answer this question, when will you commit your time and attention to this passion project? And here's a little hint, when I can get around to it is not the right <laughs> answer. So the thing is, it's to treat this passion project like you would any other personal or, or work related or family related obligation, actually block it out on your calendar. Because if it doesn't get on your calendar, it's not really a thing. Um, so block times on the calendar when you when you will devote 
uh, time to creating and working on that thing. And I know a lot of people are busy and you got families at home and you got the, the full-time job. Um, hopefully you do in this era, this era of COVID or whatever work that you, that you do. Maybe you're caring for an ill relative or aging parent or a sick child, whatever. And you got, I understand there are responsibilities and obligations, but do your best to find time for this project. Um, and so put it on the calendar, block out times for it and honor those times the same way you would with, you know, doctor's appointments and getting the car fixed and pick, dropping, uh, picking, <laughs> dropping off and picking up the kids at school. You wouldn't go, oh, I just get, get around to picking up Jimmy from daycare. No, you do it because it's something that's important. Uh, and so treat yourself with that same amount of of respect. And even if you think I don't have time, you, know, you only have 10 minutes, 15, 20, 30, half an hour. Maybe you have to get up a little earlier, stay up a little later, carve time out whenever you can. Just look at your your schedule and figure out where you can devote time to it. And if it can be daily, it's going to be even more powerful because a little time on a daily basis will be, will be, will, will create so much more momentum than waiting for three hours to become open. And that that never happening. Um, and so, yeah, time, uh, put it on the, put it on the calendar and then space. And this is a crucial one that I, I've realized more and more, uh, over the years, where will you work on this project? Is it the kitchen table? Is it a, uh, a home office or spare bedroom? Um, maybe not now, but <laughs> after a pandemic might be, might be a local coffee shop, or there's still places that that are open at times, depending where you live, where you can where you can go and get out a library or something. The thing is to set yourself up for success by having a space devoted to this activity where all the tools you need are ready to go. Uh, so I'll just give you an example from uh, my own life here. So off and on, it's probably the area of creativity that I spend the least amount of time on, but I also am a uh, a visual artist. I do acrylic painting on stretched canvas, and I really enjoyed doing that and got pretty decent at it. I do a lot of celebrity pop art portraits and stuff, sold a few, many paintings over the years here and there, but it's very part, part time. Um, and so I had been away from it for like a dozen years. And in 2012, my on my birthday, my girlfriend uh, encouraged me to get out my paints and my brushes and get back into painting, which I did. But at the time, it was such a pain in the butt because I had to pull all the crates of the stuff out. I had to get a tarp and throw it over the dining room table, set all my stuff up, um, and then, you know, start working on some paintings, which was great. But after like a week of the dining room table being completely messy, I had to pack it all back up because it just wasn't, it was unsightly or we had company coming over. Um, and so the thought of having to pull that stuff out every time was just I just never got around to it. So in the basement, we created a dedicated space where my stuff is always out. Uh, it's always ready to go whenever whenever I'm ready to to a paint. Uh, same thing with my home office here. My computer is all set up here. I have this microphone. I, I, I do podcasting. I do uh, YouTube. That's one thing I didn't mention also in my little introduction. Uh, been a big part of my life in recent years is that I have a YouTube channel where uh, a few years ago, I started doing uh, guided meditations but even more so uh, affirmation recordings, like morning affirmations, like positive self-talk, these statements that you repeat back to yourself. And they become immensely popular. Uh, I've got like 182,000 subscribers, over a million views a week on the channel. Um, and so i recording every week uh, with that stuff. And so I have this set up here. Um, when I do video like this, I have my lighting is already in place. I just need to turn it on, do a little tweaking of it, and I'm ready to go. So that's what I encourage you to do is have a space for this set aside for this so that when you're ready to sit down, when that time on the calendar comes, you sit down and you get to work. But uh, now let's go on to number four, shall we? Chunk it down. Don't obsess about the entirety of the project. Just focus on the next tiny action step. For instance, the thought of writing a 200 page book can be daunting. Instead, focus on writing an outline, just the, just the outline or the beginning of a chapter, or like I did with that article, those articles I mentioned earlier, is the first opening sentence of a blog post or something, or just the next 300 words. Do not think of the, the, the whole thing if that's intimidating to you, which it is for most people. So, 
So chunk it down. <laughs> I just love saying that. Chunk it down. Um, and so, and again, I'm going to encourage you to, to, to choose a passion project that either is simple enough for you to complete maybe within the month of January or choose some aspect of it that you can complete. The whole thing, I think um, a lot of people deny themselves uh, small wins along the way. So maybe you could set some milestones. Maybe you're writing a three act play and you come to the end of act one, celebrate, you know, just focus on that part of it. Um, do the same thing when you complete act two and so on. You could do the same thing if you want to do a, a six song EP uh, as, as a, of original songs. Um, just focus on the one song. Maybe you just focus on uh, the lyrics of the one song. So just keep on chunking it down to its smallest component and focus on that as your next step because you can be overwhelmed by the entirety of the, the immensity of the whole project. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, that's why I encourage that you do. And so, um, and, and if you're intimidated by finishing this thing and or and then pick some small thing, some small aspect of it, instead of doing uh, an art show where you need to create 10 pieces do one little sketch. Maybe that's your first initial goal is to do a, one sketch of one uh, painting that you hope to, uh, or, or, or th th a theme that you want to create. And so I think, I think I, you, you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, chunk it down uh, and, uh, and, and just, that's all the only thing you focus on at each session is that particular little aspect of it. And it's amazing. You think, oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not making much progress here. I've been doing so little. I have so little time to devote to it. You'd be surprised if you do do it every day or multiple times a week over the course of a month. You'll look back and go, man, look at all the progress that I, that I made. It's really shocking. This one, number five, is visualize yourself enjoying the process. And this is one that I have not heard a lot of uh, people or experts recommend. Here's the deal. Most visualization exercises, and I'm a big um, proponent of mindset and using your mind uh, to see uh, where you're going, to visualize, to set goals, do, af do affirmations. All this stuff is really powerful when it's combined with the action part. So, But most visualization exercises have you imagining what it will feel like to finally reach your goal as if it's already happened. You hear that a lot. State your affirmations and think of your goals as if they've already happened. And that's cool. That can be very helpful. Um, but I also encourage you to visualize yourself happily engaged in the activities that will lead to tangible progress. This is a little bit different of a mindset because if you, <laughs> I was at a workshop once uh, years ago, uh, where a, uh, a woman stood up and, uh, and, and we were, this, this subject was, was on the table and, uh, and, and, uh, she said, I visualize myself at my ideal weight. And in my mind, I look like a supermodel. And so what happens is I, in my daily life, I eat whatever I want because I'm already real thin in my mind. <laughs> and so and everybody in the room just cracked up, but that is a conundrum with the typical, uh, visualization where you see yourself at the end. Again, that can be helpful, but I think it's more, but to get there, you need to change your behavior. You need to develop new habits. They don't have to be huge habits. Tiny habits on a daily basis make huge, make, well, that's how I've built, done everything that I've done. These tiny little habits, little steps every day. And then, you know, weeks become months, months, years. Then before you know it, you've been working at something for decades. Um, and you have results to show for it. Um, so I think that your visualization should include the process, what you're going to be doing in these daily or, the, or weekly, whatever sessions that you've devoted to this. So see yourself sitting down and being energized and the words just flowing out. If you're writing a book to see your hand moving across the canvas, um, see, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's see the, the business plan, the people that you need to meet and interact with or help you need to get with your, with your sideline business. Just imagine those interactions going, uh, effortlessly and smoothly, um, and just see what you, how you want that to un to un unfold. Of course, there's going to be times when you're going to struggle and people aren't going to do what you want them to do. Um, but still you're setting the stage, you're staying positive, you're creating what you want to happen in your life. And so I think that's an Im important piece of that. And so, yeah, so that's my best advice for you 
is to use your visualization and goal setting to actually uh, um, uh, see yourself enjoying the process and the, these habits that you're going to create to make this thing happen. And finally, that was number five, right? Yes. Oh, finally, this is so important. Nike said it best. Just do it. You've got all those other tools. You got all those other aspects of this passion pro uh, project in place. Now you just need to do it. Take and here and, and those basically my bullet points here. Are take consistent action. That means dedicate regular time. I really encourage you to do daily if you can. Um, that is the best way is to carve out this. That way you develop a habit and it's a routine. You know, just like brushing your teeth and other things you do on a daily basis, putting your shoes on before you walk out the door. It's a habit. You just don't accidentally get in the car and realize, oh, I don't have shoes on because I only do it once a week or once a month. It's something you do every every day. Baby steps. Chunk it down. Don't think of the entirety of the whole project. What's the next tiny thing that you need to do? Just focus on that. Also, break it down into milestones that you celebrate along the way, as I mentioned earlier. That uh, that can really, yeah, because the only celebration doesn't have to take place when the whole thing is finally done. When you hold the book in your hand or the album or whatever, it or opening night, uh, you can celebrate st uh, milestones along the way and just chip away at it until it is complete. You know, little by little, step by step, it might not seem like you're making progress or you're doing much, but you are. And those consistent daily habits or sessions and that you honor and those commitments to yourself that you put on the calendar, they will build over time. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll be amazed when you look back six months from now and go, I got that thing. Yeah. And Jordan makes a good point here. For some reason, I'm not seeing the little, well, there, there was one last question. What about the benefit of making a list of accomplishments you've already achieved to prove to ourselves we can do it? That's a great one because a lot, we're familiar with the to-do list. Uh, but some years ago, I know I didn't come up with the idea, but um, I, uh, I I recommended people have a got done list. And so as you scratch those things off of your to-do to list every day, you can do this daily or whenever. Um, but uh, um, yeah, you can make a list of the things you did today. Has, has anyone ever asked you, like, what did you do this past week? And you're going, um, hmm, I know I did a bunch of stuff, but I can't remember. So it'd be nice to have a list. But I think, Jordan, what you're talking about is probably... Um, a bigger picture. Uh, I think we often uh, sell ourselves short or forget the cool things that we have done over the years, like you uh, publishing your uh, yellow pills. Wasn't that the zine and being a journalist for local and other publications um, and having awesome questions that you pose on Facebook. So the, <laughs> I'm sure were, that's just what I know that, that off the top of my off the top of my head, but yes, reminding yourself, that's a great point. Reminding yourself of all the stuff you already accomplished, take that sense of uh, pride or whatever and, and success and apply it to this new thing. Uh, Cause you've overcome challenges. You've, you've done amazing things in the past. Everyone has. And so just remind yourself of that. Give yourself the credit you deserve and then apply it to this new thing. So get as many passion projects out into the world as you can is what I, what I say. So here's a little summary here of the six steps to completing your passion project. It's choose your passion project. What is that thing? Be as specific as you possibly can. What's your big why? What's the thing that's um, drawing you uh, to do this? Um, maybe it's, I don't know, to honor a grandparent or a parent or, or something within you that you have been denying yourself of doing. Uh, and just figure out what that why is. There, there could be more than one reason. Carve out the time, carve out the space, have a space available so that, and when you uh, put those things on the calendar, um, you're ready to sit down and do it when that time comes. Chunk it down. We've already talked about that a lot. Visualize yourself enjoying the process is number five and six. Just do it, damn it. All right, <laughs> just do it. So that is my little mini workshop. Again, when no matter what time of the year you happen to catch this, you can put these principles to use. Um, and so basically, yeah, don't deny yourself the uh, getting this passion project out into the world. It's going to make you feel good. Um, there's probably been some sort of maybe a frustration or uh, you've been denying yourself pursuing this thing uh, for 
who knows how many years, maybe a lifetime. Uh, and now is the time to start making, taking those baby steps and finishing that project, completing it, getting it out into the world and hopefully sharing it with people and making the world a better place. Well, I know it's been a weird year, but let's make the best of 2021. And uh, if you can uh, do it by completing a passion project, I'll be really, really happy. And so will you. So I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, have a good one. This is Bob Baker saying so long for now. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that you can really apply these six steps to your actual life and to your real passion projects. As I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm an adjunct professor at Lindenwood University, located in St. Charles, Missouri, not far from my home. And as I record this, I'm in the middle of my fifth year of teaching music marketing. Sometimes I also teach a case studies and uh, music industry trends class. And it's just been really a delight to teach some amazing students who have come through the program. And what I really like about Lindenwood is not only do they have a great uh, music uh, program uh, and have all the various disciplines and instruments and vocals and all of that good stuff, but they also have a great music business program uh, that focuses on the entrepreneurial aspects of the music business, which is something that a lot of universities and colleges don't really cover to a great extent. So I'm honored to be on the faculty at Lindenwood, and I encourage you to check out the programs there. Maybe you can even take one of my music marketing classes when you attend. All right, thanks again for watching. I hope this was helpful. I wish you great success with all of your passion projects and your life. This is Bob Baker saying so long for now.